Hey, hey, everybody, what's up? This is Eartha Baca, and welcome to the Beauty Graffiti Live Show. Here we are together, me and you, this side. We're live. So give me a shout, tell me where you're from. I would love to see where everybody's at. So be like, I'm over here, I'm over here. I'm over here in SoCal, California. So hello, my name is Eartha Bach. I'm a certified makeup artist. I'm also a graffiti artist. So I've just combined my two passions for makeup art and graffiti art together. And here we have Beauty Graffiti, which is actually just a culmination of everything. The beauty is you being 100% free to be you. The graffiti part of your life in everything you do screams to the world, I am here. Yes! What? <laughs> so today we're going to talk about makeup over 40. I am 47 years old and our makeup routine does change. So I have nothing on my face. Actually, I've been dying to go live now because I need to put on my moisturizer and I wanted to wait until now to show you that really right before you do your makeup, you do need to use a moisturizer, just a little tiny bit. This is actually time correcting night cream, but I use it all the time, not just at night. <laughs> so I'm going to just rub this on my skin and let my skin get nice and moisturized. Then I'm going to actually put a little bit of primer and we'll start with some makeup. Okay. So your neck, you want to bring it up. <laughs> um, never pulling or tugging just really gently applying the moisturizer. One thing I love to do tips and tricks over 40 here is I like to put it on the tops of my hands too. I take care of the tops of my hands, just like I take care of my skin on my face because this is such a towel of aging. So is our skin. Um, as we grow older, you know, we get wrinkles, um, just smile lines. I've had these since I was like a teenager, you know, it just, it's just what happens. So I like to take care of my skin. Um, on that note, I have very oily skin and I used to think when I was younger that I did not need to moisturize, which caused my skin to overproduce more oil. It makes your skin overcompensate. So just a quick tip on that. If you have oily skin, you need to moisturize because it actually helps you control your oils and it's what your skin needs. Next thing I'm going to do while I'm prepping is I'm going to take Uplift. This is actually plant-based squalane. And I'm going to put a little bit on my finger just like this, kind of rub it, and then moisturize my lips. And this is important to have your lips be moisturized as you do your makeup routine because we'll do our lips last. And that gives the squalane a nice amount of time to sit on your lips, moisturize them. And very interestingly, when I was getting my certification to be a makeup artist, the model that was being used um, my makeup instructor, she actually was moisturizing her lips as well. So she did the exactly what I just showed you. She put moisture on her, moisturized her lips, and just let that set for just a minute or so. So in the meantime, I'm going to grab a drink of water. <sighs> my Zumba cup. <laughs> and we are going to do a full face of really easy makeup. Okay, so this is going to be something very easy, something simple. And while this is setting, let's just talk a little bit about what happens as we age. Our brows thin, our lashes thin, we get wrinkles, we get those little fine lines here, and our, our lip looks start to bleed into those lines, unless we know these few tips and tricks. So moisturize your lips, and then you do want to kind of wipe it so that when you apply your lip products, it's not going into too much moisture, because then it's just all everywhere. So... Just let that set and it's, I can feel it now. It's less, uh, the consistency is less like slippery. It's sinking into my lips. So that's a good thing. The next thing we're going to do is an all over face primer. I'm just going to do this so fast because we have a full face of makeup to do, which is not going to take long, but this is all you need. See that it's like the size of a pea. I like to touch it to my fingers. That's all you need. And just kind of tap it around your face and gently, gently rub it around. I do my eyes, although I'm going to use an eye primer too, and, and we'll discuss that in a second. So I'm going from the center of my face and at my fingertips, I'm swiping towards the hairline. Definitely get your nose. The primer keeps your makeup from sinking into your skin. It keeps your makeup from sinking into those fine lines and wrinkles and causing creasing. It also helps with oil control to prevent that cakiness when the oil seeps through your pores. The primer is blocking that, but it's not blocking your pores so that they are becoming clogged. 
it's actually just blocking the oils from coming out, the makeup from sinking in, and it's preventing that layer so it doesn't get all cakey and weird. So definitely, definitely, definitely use your face primer. If you're not going to wear any face makeup, you can skip this step if you like. However, I recommend even if you're not wearing makeup to put a little thin layer of primer because it protects your pores in like with the makeup against pollution, dirt, exhaust from cars, just all that yucky stuff that gets in your pores and causes breakouts. This will help prevent that and give you beautiful soft skin. It smells good. It feels good. Your, your skin feels silky. Next thing for sure is an eye primer. I like to give mine a little shake. <laughs> And eye primer, this particular brand, this is Unique's eye primer. I really like because it's actually specially formulated to uh, really, really have your makeup look set and adhere to your skin better. And the true color of your makeup will show, but better yet, it's going to prevent even more of that caking and creasing. And as we get older, that happens a lot in our eyelids because our eyelids start to create wrinkles. Maybe you have a hooded eye like I do, which no matter what age I am, <laughs> I've always had a hooded eye. So, and I used to, before I even knew about eye primer, I used to have caking and creasing. I thought, well, maybe makeup just isn't for me, you know, and that's not the truth. I just didn't know. So hopefully that tip really helps you kind of overcome some of those hurdles too in your makeup. You're going to want to let this just kind of sit for a second too. If you notice, I did put it on my brows because I'm going to do a little bit of brow. So while that's setting, I'm just going to go ahead and do my brows. I'm going to grab a spoolie. This is just a little spoolie and comb out what little bit I do have. <laughs> so don't forget to shout it out. If you've stopped by, let me know. Just say, hey, Eartha, I stopped by real quick. I use a magnifying mirror too because, oh, I got to wipe that off. Got water on that. <laughs> there we go. Magnifying mirror because I wear glasses and a magnifying mirror really helps with that. That's another quick tip. Okay, for brows. I'm going to grab my Brow Obsession palette. I love this palette because it just keeps everything in one place. I don't have to dig around for a bunch of stuff. So this palette is Palette Brunette. There's a light, medium, and a dark. Um, it has a mirror, which is great. I use these two colors a lot and the brow wax. I don't use these two colors because I have a hooded eye and the shimmer makes my eye look smaller. So I use a matte. So these two colors for me, I don't use. I don't use this as a transition because I use other colors as well. So that being said, I just let them get fallout in it and I didn't really pay attention or care about them because I don't use them. <laughs> so that being said, today, I'm gonna use one color, just the light color for this reason. I'm going to keep it very light today, okay, very light. Normally, if you're going to do a darker brow, you're going to want to use two colors because you're going to want to create dimension. You're going to want to have a light and then darker on the tail of your brow. But for today, I literally have to draw on the tail of my brow. So I'm going to keep it light just with this color and fill in just a little bit of where my brow actually is. So that being said, all that discussion let my primer set before I go in. This is a brow artist brush. One end is angled, very thin. This end is flat, very thin. So you need a good brow brush for this to do any brows. And as you can see, I do use this, this lighter color often because there's like an indent where none of my makeup has an indent. <laughs> Tap off the excess. You guys are gonna have a little bit of fallout. Let me switch mirrors. And I'm just gonna quickly draw on, we won't discuss brow techniques right now, because I really want to just get into everything else and not take up too much time. If I go darker brow, I have to go with darker eye. So I've got to keep this super light and just draw the ends. This end color is already going to be lighter than my natural color. So it's like I do have a dimensional brow going on. You go little brow strokes here just to fill it in. I don't want a big, dark, heavy brow. I just want something to frame my face. That's all I want right now. So that being said, I am just doing what the one color. My other brow tutorials, I always talk about using two colors. So my natural brow is lighter and I'm not filling it all the way in. So it is the illusion of two colors. 
Okay, let's just do little, little brush strokes here. I'm going to use a product today that maybe you use, maybe you don't. And it's going to be a splurge cream shadow. A cream shadow. Sounds pretty interesting. So with this technique, I can just actually clean this up with my finger. I don't have to go and do a concealer and all those other craziness. This is a real brow wax in the Brow Obsession palette. So you want to use your finger and to where your natural hair is on your brow, just set it down. I've had to draw on the tail of my brow, so there we go. If I put it on the ends, I'm going to be wiping it off. You don't want to do that. So just put the brow wax on literally just where you have your brow natural hair going on. So I'm going to consider that done, okay? <laughs> Today I'm going to be using three different colors of a cream shadow. One of the colors is an essential, and this color is called Victorious. Victorious is really close to my skin color, but this will work and look good on any skin color, on any skin tone, because it's gonna act as a highlighter under your brow, and you want that. Okay, so I'm using actually the other end of my brow artist brush, because this is what I would use if I was gonna glam it up and use concealer, but I'm actually gonna use this splurge cream shadow to clean up my brows, and give a highlight. So starting just right under with the brow brush, cleaning that up. Once you draw your line, you want to feather down just a little bit, just like that. And then I just like to overall swipe it around. There is an ingredient in the splurge cream shadow called dimethicone. Dimethicone is one of the main ingredients in your primer. So your splurge cream shadow has a primer-like quality. So the more primer that's involved in your makeup and on your face, the more it's gonna stay and not crease and not get cakey. And the more the color, the true color is gonna show through. It's like Cindy Lauper. I see a true color, thanks to primer. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't smile while you're doing this or that, okay. There we go. I'm just gonna just rub it on just cause, there we go. It's just so easy. Just looks really kind of just chill and natural. You just want something to offset your regular face color just so it looks a little different because we're not going full glam. This is like, I'm just chilling today. I just need something on my face, light and easy and that's it. So I have a towel down here and I'm just swirling off the brush. Swirl off the makeup off of your brushes in between when you wash them. That's really, really important. So I'm going to use this other color now, Faithful, which should be in everybody's arsenal. This is like a chocolate brown. Grabbing a splurge cream shadow brush, which is the same type of hair that's on my brow brush, but it's a different shape. This one is thin and it's paddled. It's not fluffy. You do not use a fluffy brush with a splurge with a cream shadow, okay? This is for blending and other things. You wanna use a thin, firm, paddled type of brush. So let's just get in. A little goes a long way. I'm gonna start light and build, and I'll show you how this one color can act as a transition color as well as the darker color. So we're just gonna get in here on the outer V. See, that's like already like pretty dark, right? But once I blend it out, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, now I'm gonna take off the extra that was on the brush and just kind of blend it gently into the inner corner. I'm not going full, full out. I'm not going all the way into my inner corner. And now I'm very lightly, just on the end of my brush, blending this line to this, because we don't want this harsh line. You never wanna look like you should have blended your makeup, okay? So we're focusing on this upper part. We'll get to this later. Focus on the upper part. This is normally really fast, but I'm talking. <laughs> I'm explaining the whole process. So very, very lightly, and I'm holding my brush actually down. The end of my brush is on my finger so that the lower you hold your brush, the lighter your pressure will be on the brush. If you hold it too high, you're gonna be going too hard and that blend is gonna be harsh. It will not be feather-like. So just really focus on trying to get that feathery blend up here. The splurge cream shadows blend so pretty together. Now I'm going to get that outer V and just start blending towards the center of my lid. 
along the lash line to give a little bit of color. I don't want to look like I've got eyeliner on right now. I just want this to be a very, very easy look. And if you've noticed with a hooded eye, that makes my eye look like it's drooping. And I can go like this with my finger and fix that. I'm also going to fix it with my foundation brush. So let's do that in a second. But let's get the other side going on here. And just do it super fast. Take off the excess. Remember, take off the excess, okay? So rub off the excess once you've applied it. If you feel like you've gotten the amount you want on. If you're happy with that and you're going to go with smoky eye, you don't have to take off the excess. And uh, usually, if I'm going to do more than one color, I would look straight ahead and work on the transition. But today, I'm keeping it light. So I'm doing it actually a different technique. And as we get older, unfortunately, <laughs> the skin around your eyes moves while you do this. <laughs> so you definitely want to have a light hand. If you have wrinkles around your eyes, you're gonna see that it can be stencil-y looking. So just really get in there. And again, use a magnifying mirror if that's what you need. Like if I use a regular mirror, it would look kind of blurry, you know, because I wear glasses. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you've gotta do what you've gotta do to make your look happen. Okay, so that's that. Let's see, I'm using my, let me see what, this side has a little bit more, I want to swipe away like that. There we go. I think I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. You see how just a little tiny bit of splurge cream shadow can go so far? I'm going to show you a really cool trick that you can do with it as well. Okay, so now let's go to the center lid. I have blue eyes, so I like to use a, a, a pop color that is opposite of the color wheel. For me, opposites of blues are golds, um, coppers, um, anything in the yellowy orange kind of category. So I love this color. It is called extravagant. It is like a gold apricot sort of color. And I'm going to use my finger for this. I normally, this is why it's all poked at because I do my art looks and I, use, I go in with brushes and I do all kinds of stuff. For regular makeup, I'm going to just use my finger, get a little bit on there. So the heat is actually working with the color. Look how pretty that is. The heat actually sets it onto my skin a little better, and it's going to bring out that pop color. And I'm going to push it onto the center lid and not swipe it. So I'm just going to push and press. I'm dabbing. And I'm not trying to do a cut crease. I'm not trying to do anything like that. I'm doing a very light look so that it's pretty, but it's not overdone. Like, how can you wear this gold apricot color and not look like you're going to the club, you know? <laughs> We're not going to the club. Maybe you just want to go to work or you just want to go out or maybe it's just simple. Maybe it's a daytime. It's the daytime look. Okay, so a brown, a dark brown, depending on how much you put can be light or you can darken it up if you want. This gold color can be very subtle or I can really just push and do more layers and really have it come out. Today, I'm going to keep it light because I would have to do darker brows if I'm going to go heavier eye and I don't want to do that. Okay, so this is what's happening. Now, as we get older too, if you have any fallout, don't worry because that's why we do our foundation after. We do foundation after our eyes because of fallout. All right, so this is cool. If you feel like you wanna blend it a little bit more, grab that brush again and just blend out where the two colors meet and just let the inner corners be. I also have a color I'm gonna use for my inner corner, but after foundation, I'm going to use this color here and just show you how you can just add a little shimmer without, again, being over the top. So that's that. Let's go into tight lining. Tight lining is a technique that you use a black liner with and you go right underneath your lash line. Always use a sharpened pencil, even if it looks already pretty sharp. Just give it one swirl and turn the sharpener, not the pencil. That's another makeup artist tip. Tight lining is where you take the pencil and you go under the lash line. Now here's a trick. If you look sideways and don't do it right in front of your pupil, you will have less tendency for the, the, uh, re, uh, the blinking reflex, okay? So just staying right here on the outer V and I'm looking in so that I'm not crossing my pupil. 
I'm just going to stay right kind of on the center to the end. Just like that. I'm not going all the way in because then I'm going to create more of a darker look. It's going to get smoky eye. It's going to have to get bigger makeup. So keeping it simple, from the outer V to the center of the lid, you want to use a pencil that glides on easy. You don't want to use a, a harsh pencil. This pencil is unique. I'm using all unique makeup today. They glide on. They go on buttery smooth. They're smudge proof and smear proof. I love this I love these pencils for that. Secondly, to keep our eye look more open, I'm gonna use white. So using the white, again, I'm gonna give this a twirl on the sharpener. You wanna use it on the lower lash line. There we go. Just to give that lower lash line color, because you don't want it to look like you forgot your lower lash line, but this also is gonna open the eye look. Do you see how this looks? A little bit more closed. This looks a little bit more open. But you don't want to look unfinished. And I'm not today, I'm not going to bring my makeup down underneath. We're not. We're going to keep it light. Everything is going up. So when we're over 40, if you do a heavier eye look and you do smoky eye, your eyes are going to look a little bit more down. But if that's a look you're going for, that's great. But to avoid that in your regular makeup routine, you want to keep everything up. Okay, so let's add some mascara real quick. I'm gonna use Epic Mascara. And I've been using a lash serum too that gives me uh, long lashes naturally so that I don't have to use falsies. I don't have to use extensions. I don't have to use uh, the little semi falsies that I used to use on the ends of my lashes. I used to glue on a few just to give it a little winged effect. Okay, so that's that. I usually set this as well with a hair dryer, but I'm not going to do that trick today. I did it in other videos. If you guys want to see that trick, just shout it out. Say hair dryer, hair dryer. I want to see the hair dryer trick, Eartha. And then I will actually do it for you. Just for you. Even if it's just one person. <laughs> shout out hair dryer. Okay, this is such an easy light look. Another trick about mascara, if you want to keep your eyes totally looking open, don't do your lower lash line. I like to have some mascara on my lower lash line because with a hooded eye, I feel like it opens my eye a little bit more. Um, so I'm just going to touch it just a little bit. And I just give it a little wiggle. I don't go all crazy. I just give a little tiny, you barely can even see it on the camera. Even using the same amount for the other side. Let's get that. Uh, one trick you can do with mascara is you can go like this and actually brush it along the lower lash line. And that just gives you a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of mascara. It actually just looks like you have darker lashes. It doesn't even look like you're wearing mascara necessarily. Okay, so let's do our face now. I'm super excited. Uh, all that has happened. <laughs> we are moving right along. I'm going to grab some concealer. And interestingly enough, while I was, again, I was referred to when I was getting my certification for makeup artist, my instructor, she does celebrities, she's just Beyonce, I mean, just everybody, I mean, just everybody. I mean, her resume was just like crazy. But she was letting us know that one of the best things you can use to apply concealer is your finger. So applying on the back of my hand, I'm just kind of just rubbing it around so that it's a little bit thinner. This concealer is super pigmented. It's called Skin Perfecting Concealer, and yeah, <laughs> for good reason. So what I do, you always see makeup tutorials, they do like lines. I just do the same shape. The, sh the shape you want to go for is an upside down triangle. So this is the shape you're trying to go for, okay? An upside down triangle, but you also want to take it to the top of your cheekbone. And again, I'm not going full glam. You want to do the side of your nose. And the heat of your finger is actually setting it and pushing it into the skin instead of smearing it around. With concealer, you want it in and on the skin. You don't want to smear it around. That's like defeating the whole purpose. Okay, side of the nose. With the same little bit, I'm just going to touch the sides of my, my uh, parentheses. <laughs> 
and dab. I'm not even using a lot. I'm not even just taking what's up here, tend to get on my chin. A trick for those of us over 40, we have these fine lines and wrinkles. Grab a little tiny bit. I haven't even, I haven't even gotten more off my hand. And just touch along the top of your lip line because you want that concealer to stop any bleeding into those fine lines and wrinkles. Dab it out so it doesn't look like you have a concealer mustache. <laughs> now we'll take just a tiny bit because I can see this is going a long ways. And I'm just going to touch the center of my forehead and down my nose a bit. So the reason you want to take care of your skin so well so that you can do this and not have to worry about covering. I barely, I even have all this left over. Unbelievable. <laughs> okay, so have great skin. You guys take care of your skin. It's really important so that you can do a makeup, no makeup look. You can run around bare face and have bare face confidence, which is always a plus. So here's what I'm going to do now. To get a glowy look, I'm going to use something you may not have thought about using for a light, easy contour with a little bit of a glow. And you're going to see how I do this. This is a cream, powder to cream luminizer stick. There's so much in here. I don't know how I will ever, ever, ever get through one of these. <laughs> this is the color Opaline that I'm going to be using for contour. It's a deep coppery with a little bit of gold. I'm going to jump over to the white for iridescent for the highlights. And let's just draw on the lines and I'll show you what I'm going to do. For the contour, it's going to be under. I'm going to gently draw just a little bit of line, a little bit, a little bit. Okay, that's where I'm going to contour. And it's going to look so subtle and so pretty. And you do want to do this underneath your foundation. And I'll show you why. This would be the top. We want an under the foundation glow. So this is how you do it. I'm so excited to show you. Okay, now I am not one to spend time with a blending bud and patting my face. That just drives me absolutely bonkers. So what I do use is the foundation brush because I love how smooth the bristles are. There's a little well in the middle that you don't fill with product, but it helps the product evenly disperse on your skin as it moves around. So I love it. So I'm gonna show you guys now how easy this is to blend. So grabbing my Touch Minerals Liquid Foundation, you wanna shake it first and then empty the dropper, okay? Empty the dropper because what we draw back in the dropper has to be a mixed product. If you don't empty the dropper, what you're gonna put onto your brush is an unmixed product. You don't wanna do that. Okay, I'm so excited to show this trick to you guys. First, we wanna add one, two, three. Let me just grab a little bit more. Those dots are small. <laughs> Okay, so I put a few dots around in a circle. Now I'm going to grab something unsuspecting. This is our brand new body shimmer. And I've worn it now for about a week. Um, and it goes on and it has a very strong, at first, at first only at first, a very strong uh, smell of jasmine. And then that smell literally goes away. So I don't even know. Um, it's going to feel liquidy at first. And then it doesn't feel like you have anything on. If you're going to see some shimmer right away, and then all of a sudden you feel like, oh, where did it go? But then you go out in the sun, and oh my God, it is the most beautiful, subtle, little tiny flecks that just glow, and you don't look crazy. You don't look weird. <laughs> you do not. So I'm going to actually put a little bit, because it's very liquidy, into the cap. Okay, into the cap. So just like that. And now I'm going to add it to, let's see if it'll pour out. Add it to my foundation here. I might need to put a little bit more because it's not pouring well. You know what? Let me let me be brave <laughs> and see if I could get just a tiny dab on there. Oh yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Oh my gosh, perfect. Okay, now why am I putting both products on this brush? Because as I dab it around my face and start to blend and mix, it's going to become mixed, and that's what I want. And it's going to blend out this contour. So I'm going to dab my Center my face, around my nose, out towards the hairline. That's where I'm dabbing, okay? Now I'm going to start brushing in circular motion. 
getting that contour. I'm not going crazy. Okay, some people go and it's just wild. It's wild. So you're going to see it at first, it's going to look kind of shiny. But then it sets and it is just so pretty, you guys. So pretty. Don't be afraid to try this on your face. It's going to set, I promise. There is no color to it. It's not orangey. At first, it appears that way. Okay, so gently, I'm working this, I'm working this contour. See how that's glowing now? So pretty, so soft. Okay, blend this out. Move it lower. Blend this out, and you want to take this down onto your chin. Dab this down. Dab this down. Don't forget around your nose. Blend this. So here's um, the really important thing about makeup. If you're going to stick with liquids, stick with liquids. If you mix liquids and powders, it's going to become, a, it's going to have a crackly effect. So you definitely, definitely want to stick with liquids. If you're going to use this technique, stick with liquids. What that means is I didn't use a powder highlighter. I, I used the cream to powder highlighter. So it sets as a powder. The foundation sets as a beautiful matte satin finish. So I don't even have to set it with powder. But this is going to give me this beautiful, glowy, super pretty look. You definitely want to get your neck. So I'm doing my jawline because I put that contour there on my jawline. Pull it down. Pull it down. You never want to look like you just have like a mask on. Okay, so if you if your makeup looks like it has a start point and an end point, you just need to blend that out more. So blending over over the contour with the foundation gives me kind of an underglow instead of such a bold top sculpted glow, sculpted look like if I really want to go glam I'm going to spend time sculpting my cheeks I don't want to sculpt my cheeks right now I just want to be like out in the sun just doing my thing just having fun so this is a nice easy makeup look for that this also sets into that Concealer that we used, the Liquid Touch Foundation, again, it sets to a powder quality, but doesn't look powdery. It's, it's really, it's incredible. It's very interesting how this sets. I love it, actually. So don't stop there with your shimmer. Check this out. This is just so pretty, you guys. It's so pretty. Put some in your hands. It's very liquidy, so I'm, I'm doing it down below, so it's, I'm careful with it. But this liquidy sets. It sets, it dries, okay? So I'm gonna add to my shoulders. It's gonna be so pretty. I love to just put it down my arms. When you go out in the sun, it's just so pretty. Oh, I love it. You can actually add a little here. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that off my hands because I, I need my hands to not be slippery right now. <laughs> I love it. This is the most incredible new product that I just, I, it's a must have. It's absolute must have. Let's do some lips, let's do some lips. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab a lip liner. Today I'm gonna use Plush. This is, oh, my hands are slippery, hold on. I'm gonna use this color called Plush. It's uh, like a mauve. And get a little bit of lined liner in there. Let me switch to my magnifying mirror. <laughs> this is gonna look a little dark at first and I'm gonna cover Cover it with a gloss look, so it's gonna be really pretty. You wanna do an X and then go down. Go to your lower lip, the center line, and then go to the edge. If you want a contoured lip look, jaw line in the center, jaw line in the center, on the side. This is very, very subtle. Okay, that's what we're gonna do with liner. Liner keeps your lipstick or your glasses in place. It keeps it from going anywhere past the line. <laughs> if you are going to wear a lip stain, you don't want anything on your lips. You want to clean, dry. You don't even want to put the moisturizer. You definitely just want to have the lip stain stain your lips. You can put stuff on top of it, but you definitely want to have nothing on your lips with a stain. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna use today though is two colors of lip gloss. We're gonna start off with this really pretty pink called Lovable, and then I'm gonna top it off with Lunar right in the center, which is like a gold. That's so, so pretty, you guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, the gloss is awesome because it has a little mirror, so I don't even need to go reach for my other one. Okay, I like to rub it in just a little bit. Take it to the center. And then out. I love it. I love it. Love it. All right. This technique I'm gonna do now adds a little bit of color dimension and a pop look. So you can see that my, my makeup today is simple, it's easy, it's fun, it's pretty, and it's so wearable. Definitely over 40 -able. <laughs> So taking this gold flaky, sparkly color lunar, there's a trick about these lip glosses. There's a little mirror cover. And I didn't take this one off yet. So take that off and your mirror will not be blurry. <laughs> it's not just you. You don't need to up your prescription on your glasses. So touch onto the center of the lip. Just for a nice, pretty change. Just a little change up. Keep these in your purse. So pretty. It's so fun. There, touch in the center. That's it. Just keep them in your purse. Look how easy that is. It doesn't matter if it's hot outside because this container will not melt your product. You won't have to worry about when you open it up what to expect because there it is. It's all being taken care of. So how cool is that? Um, definitely finish off with a setting spray. So give your setting spray a little, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want a little bit of sparkle on the inner corner. So this color is called Smitten from Addiction Palette 3. And I'm just gonna use my finger because the heat does the work. The heat of my finger does the work for me. I don't need to blend it with a brush or anything. And that just gives me a little bit of something, something, something. It's so subtle, so pretty, and it just makes a difference. So we're gonna set it with setting spray. Pull the eight to 10 inches from your face and you wanna go X and then a T, okay? And then you definitely wanna just pan and let it set. So here we go. Um, I'll do some on the cheek. I like that. So nice, so nice. If you want, you can add a little bit of blush, but if you feel like you, you're liking your look and it's pretty simple, then you're good to go. If you do add a little blush, definitely choose one such as this color here from Unique. This is called Serene, and it actually, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's got a shimmery sparkle to it. You know what? Let's go ahead and apply it. I'll do another coat of setting spray. <laughs> You can too. You can use your uh, second coat after setting spray because setting spray can act also as a primer. So, well, behold does. So, just add a little tiny bit of, just a little tiny, 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 because again, we don't want to have that liquid and powder thing going on. We don't want it to crackle and be weird. So, just that tiny, tiny little, little bit will be okay. There's no right or wrong way to wear your makeup, it's all personal personal style, personal taste, personal preference. But there are some basic tips and tricks that if you know, you can make that any look you want happen. If you want to actually up your mascara game, check this out. This is something else you can do. Now that my mascara has set, it's already dried, you can actually take a little bit more and put a little on the inner corner, a little on the center lash, a little on the end, and create sort of like a burst kind of effect on your lash without going too big or too crazy, because remember, we would have to do darker makeup. Let's see if you can notice a difference on the camera as I can see in person. Okay, do you see the difference of that little bit, ex that little extra made? So let's just go ahead and do the other side. I love to use this trick. This is a very different technique. Rather than just adding a second coat, you are strategically placing little starbursts. Little starbursts. So I'm using the tip of the wand, going on the inner lashes, the center lashes, and the lashes right on the outer V for a little kind of wispy starburst effect. 
And there we go. There we have it. That is Beauty Graffiti, episode 17, Makeup Over 40 Tips and Tricks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for being here with me live. Thank you for your comments. I'm going to look now and see who has stopped by. So thank you very much. Hi, Elizabeth. Oh, my husband's watching. Hi, Steve. <laughs> thank you guys for being here. I sure appreciate it. I know where Steve is from. Elizabeth, oh, remind me where you're from. I think you're from Arizona, but remind me if I got that right or wrong, okay? So you guys have a great night. This is Makeup Over 40. Now I'm ready for fun in the sun. I'm shimmery. I'm glowing. The feeling is, is soft and silky. Uh, the effect is glowing and bright without being oily and crazy. And this whole makeup look will control oils. If you're going to be out in the sun, be sure to use your sunscreen because makeup is not a sunscreen, okay? Take care of your skin. Rock your beauty graffiti. Love who you are. Embrace who you are. Every ounce of you is amazing. So thank you for being here. Rock your world. I will see you next Friday at 12 p.m. Feel free to share this video on your page. Your friends will dig it. I promise. <laughs> All right, you guys, take care. Have an amazing weekend. I'll see you next Friday.